dreamy Dobie Wants a gal who's screamy Dobie Wants a gal to call his own Is she blonde? Is she tall? Is she dark? Is she small? Is she any kind of dreamboat at all? No matter It's hers and hers alone Dobie Look at me. Seventeen and a half years old, and my parents think I'm still an infant. Boy, wouldn't that bug you? I mean, here I am, treated like a baby, when I've been shaving for a year already. Sometimes I even use a blade and a razor. The awful thing is, it's, it's only human beings who refuse to admit it when their children grow up. Take any other animal. Take kangaroo parents. When their little beast can take care of himself, away he hops. But people parents, ha! They hang on to their little beast till they're past 20, clear into middle age. It's contrary to nature. I mean, you show me one kangaroo who's 17 and a half and still hacking around the pouch. So where are you going to get another pouch with six meals a day and a loaded refrigerator built in? I was only using the kangaroo as a figure of speech. Gee, Dad, you just don't understand me. That's one of the few pleasures remaining to me at my age in life. Now, pipe down, will you? Let me find out what's going on in the world. <laughs> that Dick Tracy. On Sunday, when he's in color, he always wears a green hat and a yellow overcoat. All I'm trying to say is that coming home last night at quarter to 11, when I was supposed to be home at 10.30, is not the greatest crime since the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Say, give me some more of that, will you, Winnie? You know, you scramble a mean egg. Fifteen minutes late, and you lock all the doors. And bolt all the windows. Yeah, I almost got arrested trying to break into my own house. It was very embarrassing. You poor boy. Why not go whole hog and issue me a striped suit and a tin cup to bang on the bars with? There's no freedom in this house. I'm treated like a child. Hey, you know that Daddy Warbucks? He had a haircut like that years before you, Brenner. I must be given more independence. The little bird learns to test its wings by being pushed from the nest. I ask for the same right. If nobody pushes you, promise me one thing. You'll jump? Herbert, that's no way to talk to Dobie. You know how sensitive he is. There, there, darling. Oh, Everything Miss, will be all right. Stop that, Mom. Don't you see? You're treating me like a child, too. I don't want you to take care of things for me. I don't want you to protect me. I... One more interruption, and you will need all the protection you can get. I will reject. I prefer to stand on my own two feet. Well, while you are on your own two feet, how about putting a broom in your own two hands and doing a little work around here, just as a change of pace, huh? Now, oh, what's the use? In China, they used to tie ropes around the little girl's feet so the feet wouldn't grow. You're doing the same thing to my mind, keeping it small, undeveloped, and puny. So that's what happened to it, huh? Herbert, it is your duty as a father to listen to the boy. Why? I listened to him last year. All right, go ahead. I'm listening. Thank you. I am not being allowed to grow up. Big deal. Herbert, Dobie is right. Parents are always trying to treat their children like infants because they themselves are trying to hang on to their own youth. Hogwash. It is not. It is a proven scientific fact. Proven by scientific scientists. I'll bet you got that out of one of them lame brain women's magazines. Of they yours. are excellent magazines. To wrap fish heads in. Listen, I need to test my wits and strength against the slings and arrows of the world in which I live. Hogwash. Pure grade A hog wash. <laughs> now go on, dear. Tell us, how can we help you solve your problem? It's simple. Just let me move away from home. Herbert, are you going to sit there and listen to that pure grade A hogwash? Now hold on. But just... Joby, darling, you're only a baby. I'm 17 and a half. Well, an old baby, and they're the worst cut. Mother, you're choking me with a silver cord. Yeah, why don't you try whopping them with one of them scientific magazine articles? Well, that article was about other people's children. Look, there's no sense in getting your hackles up. The boy is not moving out. Now get that straight. Lower your voice. The magazines say that it is dangerous to speak harshly to children. You want him to stay, don't you? Of course, don't you? Well, right now it's six to five and take your pick. What? Yes, yes, I want him to stay. Now you hear me good, mister. Softer. It... Little bird. You're not going to fly away from the nest. And do you want to know why? I demand to know why. Because you would starve to death before you got your tail feathers warmed up. That's why. I would not. 
Why, you'd be crawling back here in a week, unwashed, unshaved, a physical wreck. You rang? <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Gillis. Mr. Gillis, how's every little thing, friends? Uh, Maynard, would you mind coming back a little later? We are in the middle of a little family discussion. Yeah, at my house, too. Don't be like, leave room when the lights start slugging it out. <laughs> hey, Big Daddy, ain't you going to school today? Oh, I almost forgot. Yeah, I like to forget almost every day. Dad, you're not being fair if you say I couldn't make good away from home. I mean, getting used to a new environment would be no problem to a basically self-sufficient person like me. I mean, it isn't as if I was a helpless type who couldn't do things for himself. Let's face it, anybody can be waited on, but it takes a real man to be honestly self-reliant. Apples? Better for your sister, me. Oh, I promise you, Dad, you wouldn't have a thing to worry about if I went out on my own. I'd handle my life calmly, thoughtfully, capably. Give me a chance, huh, Dad? Let me prove that I can make good without anybody's help. I was wrong. You would not come crawling back in a week. Naturally. If you lasted over 20 minutes, they'd have to drag you back with a St. Bernard dog. Oh, and I know what it is. You're scared to let me go. You're scared I'll prove you're wrong about me. That does it. I'm scared, huh? No, I'm scared. No, Herbert, calm down. For me, me. Sweetheart, no, please relax. Uh, uh, please. I'm scared. Hey, Doobie, little oh. like Duck Eve Jones, scared, but I think he's like mad. Why yeah. don't you do it? Why don't you go to school and forget about the Mom, whole thing? Hmm? Forget about the whole thing. Forget about it, and every time I make a move, Crusader Rabbit here will be hollering that I'm. The stymie and puny in his mind. Why, no, Doobie wouldn't do a thing like that, would you, dear? Well, Goodbye, boys. Good hold time. it. Hold it. Listen. If I let you move out of the house, will you promise me that if you fall flat on your kisser, you'll never say anything about it again? I swear to it in blood. I take a solemn... Never oath. mind that. Just a simple yes or no will be sufficient. A simple yes. Herbert, are you out of your mind sending this inexperienced child out into the hard, cold world? I think it's the hard, cold world we ought to worry about. But it's heartless. Listen, I know what I'm doing. Let him get it out of his system. Why, when I was a kid, one time I decided I wanted to go to sea. So I kept nudging my dad, let me go to sea, let me go to sea. So finally he took me down to a friend of his that worked on the Staten Island Ferry and they started me riding that crummy boat. Back and forth, back and forth, all day long. And the next day, and the next day, I must have crossed that harbor 600 times. And it cured you? Well, let's put it this way. I never bugged my old man about going to sea again. And to this day, I get a funny feeling in my stomach if I get a good sniff of a bundle of wet wash. Well, if it would really cure him. Believe me, Winnie, it'll do the trick. You really think so? On my word, as a gentleman and a grocer, it's the only way. My little man. You mean I can go? You're a good man, Mr. Gillis. You too, Mrs. Gillis. My little boy. Mm. Ma. Son, be careful. I'm like all misty. <laughs> Look, you've nagged yourself into getting this chance. But remember this, if I find out you're botching things up, I'm dragging you home and you better never open your yap again. Yes, sir. I promise. But if I make good? Well, then I won't open my yap. Man, like that I gotta see. You're on your way out. Like, bye. <laughs> yeah, Mom? Botch things up, please. Gee, Mom and Dad, you've been like... like a mother and father to me. <laughs> Hi, Big Daddy. Oh, hello, Maynard. Hey, what you got there? The classified ads. Oh. You know what classified ads are, don't you? Sure. Ads. That's right. They're classified. Right. Dope. Yeah? What are classified ads? Maynard. Oh, I can read the words all right, but man, like, I don't dig the arrangement. <laughs> Young man, late model convert, radio, heater, WW tires, power throughout, looking for young lady with gas credit card, objective. Honeymoon in Las Vegas. Man, it's a beat there, Daddy. Oh, it, like, lost me. Maynard, that's a lonely heart sand. A fellow's trying to find a... Oh, never mind. That's not what I'm interested in, anyhow. I'm trying to find a place to live. Yeah, the pad ads. Hey, Doe, when are you going over the wall? As soon as I can find something I can afford. And it's very discouraging. They want at least $40 a month for anything worth moving into. All I've got is an advance on next month's allowance. $27.50. $27.50? Man, I thought getting even ten bucks out of your father was like tougher than wringing blood out of a termite. <laughs> turnip. Yeah, turnip. Yeah. Yeah, the old brain did it, Maynard. I showed him how much money he was going to save when I moved out of the house, and Mom made him give me the difference. After he got through crying, he was very nice. Good thinking. Yeah. You ever cut to the wallet, gets him every time. Yeah, Good you thing. take food. 
You see, I eat anywhere well, from... three to eight meals a yeah, day. Yeah, plus snacks in between and extras on weekends every day in the month. Ooh, that's like 10 or 12 bucks shot right there. Yeah, and I won't be using the telephone. Look what that'll say. A fistful. Yeah, and electricity for my room and for the television. Wow, that's a lot. At least three bucks. Yeah, laundry and hot water for baths and shaving and like that, you see. There you left me. <laughs> it's a monumental piece of strategy. But I still don't have enough dough. I don't... Wait. Maynard, have you still got those hubcaps, you know, the ones you bought with the money your grandmother sent you for Christmas? Sure, I'm holding them to, like, buy a car that matches. Maynard, how would you like to sell those hubcaps and win a free-soaring, independent soul? Oh, crazy. Where do I go to get one? No, no, no. <laughs> how would you like to be my roommate? Roommate? We'll have a ball. Nobody to tell us when to go to bed, when to get up. Real progressive. Yeah, no orders, no childish regulations, no harping parents. I'm getting the message. Yeah, with the money you'll get for the hubcaps, plus my money, we can rent ourselves a real high-class bachelor apartment and have plenty left over to live on. Pie in the skies, Bill. Yeah, we'll be men, not boys. People, not puppets. Well, what do you say, man? Roommate. Roommate. Yeah, oh, man, what a wait, time wait, we'll no, have. No, hold, hold it, my, hold it. Hmm? You sure you can do it? I mean, maybe your father won't let you move away from home. You saw the hassle I had with mine. Oh, he'll let me go. How do you know? Well, I told him you was going to do it. So? So, like, who do you think sent me over here to find you? <laughs> oh, yeah. He even, like, slipped me ten bucks to, like, push things along. Oh. Roommate! 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 <laughs> in advance. Gee, when we looked at the apartment this morning, Mrs. Finch, you said 40. Five dollars deposit on the stove. Stove? Who could steal a stove? It weighs like a ton. The last tenant did. Forty-five dollars. Uh, you may as well give me the other 750 while you're at it. Other 750? Deposit on the linens. There aren't any linens in the apartment. What? Why, that fella stole everything. <laughs> so you give me the 750 and I'll order them for you. But we brought our own. You've got to use mine. It's the policy of the house. But we don't need any more. You can always give up the apartment, forfeit your deposit, and you're free. I ain't holding nobody which ain't happy here. Okay, there you go. Thank you. You're a nice boy. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you need anything, don't hesitate to call me. I'm gone most of the day. I'm seldom here at night. <laughs> the faucet in the sink leaks, but we're all out of washers. If you want to throw that away, there's a trash can out back. <laughs> Closet. Ooh, I'll take that big closet there and hang up my shirts and slacks. Uh, Maynard, Maynard, that's not a closet. It's a Murphy bed. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Push on it. You're wrong, Dope. There's no bed in there. Yes, there is, Maynard. Uh, look again. Uh, if you say so. Yeah. <laughs> But there ain't no bed in there. It's just a big empty closet. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, maybe the last guy left something in the refrigerator, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Take a look. Find anything? Guys? That was nice. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, ten ways to control fungus in the California redwood. Ooh. Hey, Dope. Somebody left a souvenir of the Garvey Hotel. Commercial rates. Silmar, Utah. Dope. Yeah? I kind of feel like sick. Now, Maynard, snap out of it. We're here to have fun, to live it up. Can't take time out to be sick. Yeah. Yeah. Maynard? Maynard? Maynard! What time is it? I think Thursday. No, no, I, I mean the hour. Oh, it's probably like around 11. That top layer dish in the sink looks like dinner. Well, that doesn't prove a thing. Yesterday, we had lunch at midnight. Yeah. Hey, go take a squint of it like scoundrels for tomorrow's breakfast. Paul? Oh, well, what did you... Did this... An economy gallon tin of popcorn? The cat in the store said it was filling, and man, we gotta like watch them greenbacks. We're running to the shorts. Maynard, we haven't even been here a week. How can we be running low on money? 
Maynard, you have to do that. Do what, good buddy? All that squirming and snapping and wiggling. Man, I got to do it. I mean, how is the music going to know that I care? Okay, stop. Stop once in a while. You mean kick it? To be perfectly frank with you, Maynard, it's getting on my nerves. You never said nothing before. You know, I was different before. I mean, when I got sick of you before, I could go home and get rid of you for a while. Yeah, I know what you mean. That was before. But now when I go home to get rid of you, what happens? You're home, too. Kind of spooky, huh? <laughs> yeah, I get the same feeling. You do? Yeah, I get pretty sick of you, too, sometimes. In fact, pretty often. <laughs> nothing personally, you understand. I understand. It's like what I do is how all the time you're waving your hands around in the air when you talk. Maynard, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, man, it's driving me wig. Well, maybe so, but how about the way you snore? Well, you grunt, you keep rubbing the back of your neck. You're always you're talking poetry and big words you don't even understand. You're always using words that nobody understands. Well, you're always... <laughs> you know something, Dope? What? You, like, hate each other. I know. Nothing personal? No, no, nothing personal. Maynard, what do you feel like doing the rest of the night? I don't know. What do you feel like doing? Well, I don't know. We could hike over to the malt shop. We can't do that, man. It's like too late. Well, who's to stop us? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Sure. Come on, let's go. I'll have a ball. Sure. <laughs> 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 It's no fun unless somebody tries to stop us. I know. <laughs> Maynard, I wish I was home. Who does? Well, we're not going to give up. We're holding out till the bitter end. We are? We are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doby, get out of the refrigerator. It's me, dear. Doby's the one with the crew cut. <laughs> you miss him, don't you? Miss who? Doby. Doby who? Oh, sweetheart. Many's the time I watched you walk the floor with him when he was a baby and had the colic. You can't fool me. You'll miss him terribly. What, miss him? I'm just fed up with him, that's all. But why, dear? You gave him permission to move out. Yeah, and look how he's abusing that permission. He doesn't call. He doesn't write. We don't know whether he's dead or alive. Why, his own mother could be on her deathbed, dying, calling for him. Well, ain't it the truth? Everything that you say is true, dear, except you're forgetting one little item. What's that? He's only been gone three days. Well, what's the principle of the thing? After all, we brought him into the world. He owes us something. Herbert. Well, he could at least call. Herbert? A little simple courtesy is all I ask. Herbert. What? Admit it. You miss him. I miss him. Well, if it's any comfort to you, darling, I can assure you that he's all right. Oh, did you see him? No, but I went over there yesterday and I talked to his landlady. Well, what'd she say? What'd she say? Well, they're fine. They're a little little house, still clothes and they'll fed, but they're fine. Well, that's a relief. The landlady wasn't there when I was over there. Why, you see? <laughs> the only way I could check on them was by inspecting their rubbish. Herbert, you didn't. Oh, you can learn a lot about people from inspecting their rubbish. Did you know that it is possible for two male human beings to live on ice cream, lemon meringue pie, chocolate syrup, and popcorn. There wasn't a single soap wrapper in the entire trash bag. Well, we know that they're alive, eating, and unwashed. Yeah, but for how long? You know, I ought to go over there and drag those two oh, idiots back. Oh, no, Herbert. You can't humiliate Doby by making him come home before he's had a chance to really prove himself. Well, it's a matter of humiliation or malnutrition. Oh, I'll give him a couple more days, and then they'll come crawling back here. But Doby has a right to make his own mistakes. Yeah, but he makes such big ones. Oh, I gotta kill that old man. That poor, poor boy. Doby? Maynard?
used to control fungus in the California redwood? <laughs> well. You've been over to see Dobie. Oh, you think I've been to see Dobie, eh? Come on now, admit it. You went to see Dobie. All right, I admit it. I went to see Dobie. <laughs> no, you didn't. You've been downtown spending a lot of money. That's where you go. Oh, I have? You sure have. Well, I fight you, her, but you are too shrewd. Mm, you're darn right. You gotta get up mighty early in the morning to put anything over on Herbert T. Gillis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now, Winnie. Where have you really been? Why don't we grab these bills at your father's store so I track them halfway across town? Are you kidding? I'd die if you ever found out we're living on beans and day old bread. Besides, his prices are too high. Well, I'm like ready to throw in the towel and fly back to the home pad. What do you say? No, we've got to hold out. Home cooked meals. Somebody to nag us. Home cooked meals. Clean sheets. <laughs> home cooked meals. Any meals. No. No, stop the siren song. If we admit defeat now, I'll never be able to look my father in the eye again. Like, why would you want to? Maynard, it's a matter of pride. A, a man has to... Hey, Dolby! I've been looking all over for you. Oh, hi, Dad. Like, hi. Yeah, uh, what are you doing here? Well, I just happened to be in the neighborhood making a few deliveries and thought I'd drop in for a friendly little visit. Oh, well, thanks, thanks, Dad. It, it's been nice seeing you. Yeah, frantic. Uh -huh, well, yeah. aren't you going to invite me in? In? You? In? What's the matter, afraid? Afraid? Oh, whatever for. <laughs> you know whatever for, because if I go in there and find what I know I am going to find, your little trip up the river of broken dreams is over, and you are coming home. Dope, your father's all heart. There's nothing unusual in there, Dad. Nothing unusual, huh? No, no. I have never been in that apartment, but I can make a pretty good guess on what I will find. Dishes piled up to there, dirty mm -hmm. clothes and shirts tossed all over the floor, dirty socks in every corner, empty cartons and tin cans piled halfway to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Well? So what's unusual about that? Uh, stop. <laughs> oh, I'm going in. <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah. Like what? Shirts, clothes, clean, neat, hanging up. Naturally. What do you think, we're like sloppy or something? We throw all the dirty stuff in the laundry bag. Yeah, but who cleans them? It's like home. You throw it in dirty, it comes out clean. Yeah. <laughs> it's full of food. It is? Oh, it is. Yeah. Sure, who gets a nice box about food? Yeah. Son? Now, Dad, look. Now, I owe you an apology. What? You said you'd make good on your own, and you did. Oh, Dad, it was nothing. You've proven your point. You're a man. You come home now and we'll treat you like one. Well... Son, I, uh, that is, well, your mother misses you. I don't know. We're getting kind of used to it here. You can have all the freedom you want. Well, I don't know, Dad. Here I'm my own boss. You can be your own boss at home. Honest, I give you my word. Well... Look, uh, you're an adult now. Come on home and we'll treat you like an adult. I promise you. Well, okay, I guess so. Yeah. Getting like all misty again. Toby, <laughs> something. You know you're glad. And the best part is he came home a hero. No humiliation, no disgrace. Due to his solid upbringing. And his fine character. And his initiative. And his hard work. And his mother. You left your glasses on top of ten ways to control fungus in the California Redwoods. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamy Dobie, 
wants a gal as creamy doby wants a gal to call his own is she blonde is she tall is she dark is she small is she any kind of dream or